Hello, I'm Nicholas Henshaw, I'm the Dean of Chelmsford, and this is my sermon podcast for the 1st of January, 2023. Gosh, a new year has dawned. Uh, And this will be my last sermon podcast because I'll be moving in four or five weeks' time. It's been lovely to share some of these thoughts with you over the years, and uh, well, best wishes for the future as the diocese goes forward. We're going to start with some... uh, words from Psalm 8. Psalm 8, that beautiful psalm appointed for today. A beautiful reflection on the nature of creation and on the God who loves us with a love without limit. The Lord our God, the whole world tells the greatness of your name. Your glory reaches beyond the stars. Even the babble of infants declares your strength. Your power to hold the enemy and avenger. I see your handiwork in the heavens. The moon and the stars you set in place. What is humankind that you remember them? The human race that you care for them. You treat them like gods, dressing them in glory and splendor. You give them charge of the earth, laying all at their feet. Cattle and sheep, wild beast birds of the sky, every swimming creature, Lord our God. The whole world tells the greatness of your name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Those great words of praise from Psalm 8. God the source of all being, meaning, and life, the creator of all things, and the one whose covenant of love is always faithful. Some words from Luke chapter 2, verses 15 to 21, extremely familiar given the season we've just been living through, but the last few lines locate it as particularly relevant for today. When the angels had left the shepherds and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So may I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. On the eighth day of Christmas, the carol invites us to send our true loves eight maids are milking, along, of course, with the rest of the list from the previous verses. Fair enough and completely opaque, as no one has yet convincingly established the meaning of the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas. But on the eighth day, certainly, something very interesting is going on. Because, as we just heard in the Gospel reading, the eighth day holds together several different overlapping themes. New Year's Day, certainly, and the Feast of the Naming and Circumcision of Jesus. Ooh, as it says at the end of that gospel, after eight days, today, after eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus. In a sense, that's simply an accident of chronology. First of January, New Year's Day, secular news, New Year's Day, as well see more of in a moment, and the fact it's simply eight days after the date, 25th of December, that the first Christians chose to celebrate the birth of Jesus. 
So it was inevitable that New Year's Day would fall on the eighth day, the day of the naming of Jesus. An accident, yes, but one worth thinking about. Because almost uniquely among world faiths, the Christian church has always accepted what we might call secular time. Uh, that means, you know, the way the world measures time. Uh, certainly we have a rich history of calendars that pattern time in a whole range of distinctive ways, you know, feasts and seasons, fasts and festivals. Uh, in, in a sense, they shape the year. But unlike, say, Judaism or Islam, or, or indeed the French revolutionaries, we've never tried to change the names of the months of the year or the days of the week to kind of Christianize them. We've always accepted the secular world's version of time. That is surprising, I think, given that some of the months, including January, of course, are named directly after pagan Roman gods. You'd think we might think that was a bit dodgy, but there we are. And many of the days of the week are named after pagan Norse gods, a similar, similar thing. But we've never seemed to have questioned this. Uh, maybe the most surprising, and uh, even I have some questions about this, uh, is that whereas most Christian cultures use a word relating to Passover when they're talking about the death and resurrection of Jesus, in English-speaking countries, we simply call it Easter. And that is extraordinary because that's Aostra, a pagan Germanic spring goddess. Ah, oh, but still the same thing. We're choosing actually not to colonize time, but to say something new. I'd suggest that that's excellent theology because God comes to us, to his world, to his creation, to transform us, not to colonize us. And the world, in all its tragedy and in all its triumph, in all its glorious diversity is, and always has been, the realm of God's action and the place into which he sends us as bearers of good news, as agents of his transformation. We are invited, so to speak, sent out to encounter not a fancy made up ecclesiastical world, but the world as it is. The world God has created and the world, the whole world, the whole created order that God loves and has redeemed. That's the whole point of John 3.17. God in Christ has redeemed the whole created order. In the words of Michel Coist, great French priest and writer, if we could see the world through God's eyes, then we would see that nothing is secular, nothing is secular. So God has gone before us. We don't bring the gospel into places, let alone build the kingdom. God has already done that. Our job as the sent people of God is to help people recognize and name a God they already know. Because if God is the God who he says he is, if God is the God whom we believe him to be revealed in Christ Jesus, then he has not left anyone without some clue to God's nature, God's purpose, God's presence, and God's power. I'd suggest that this New Year's Day, the job of Christians, the job of the church, in the work of evangelism, is not so much to tell people something they don't know, but to help them recognize somebody they already know. So let's hold before God the life of the world, this arena, which is God's, the arena of God's action, the life of the church. Oh, and of course, the purpose of the church is to be present in God's world not to huddle behind closed doors, uh, not a club, but a culture that transforms the world. Let's pray for all the churches of this diocese, for Gully, our bishop, and all the ways in which our ministries seek to take forward God's agenda, God's mission, and incarnate God's love. And as a blessing, I'm going to use the words from today's first reading. That's Numbers 6. 22 to 27. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Amen.